wishes will not deliver your expectations. Sitting, repeating old cycles will not deliver your expectations. Somebody say, I'm breaking the cycles. Do you have a plan? Do you have a budget? Is it written? Is it clear? Are you following? Are you pursuing the plan? Somebody shout expectation. Or are your expectations just in your head? It's not going to happen. The Bible says write the vision. Somebody say write the vision. When you write, you bring something from the spiritual to the physical. That's why God had to write the Ten Commandments. Somebody say God writes. He even has a book called the Book of Life where names are written. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone that will grow financially, spiritually, mentally, psychologically in your career, you've done the same job for 10 years, and you're like, I'm happy here. No, you shouldn't be happy there. That doesn't mean you're not content. It just means that God expects you to carry more. Somebody say, I carry more. Anyone that will grow this year, today is Growth Sunday, must learn to write down their visions. Things don't just happen. People make them happen. Things don't just work. People make them work. Things don't just exist. People make them exist. You're here today because you took a decision and you made efforts. You could have gone to the mall or you could have been in your bed, but you decided and you were intentional to come here. Even when you got here, you could have turned back at the signboard. Am I right? When you got to the stairs there, you could have said, I'm not going in. Amen, somebody. When you got to the door, you could have said, I'm good. I'm going back home. But you took one more step. Somebody say intentionality. And then when you got to these two doors, you looked around and you were like, mm, is this where I belong? Should I come in? Should I sit? Then you took one more step. And even why, where you are sitting right now, you still had a decision to say, I'm not sitting. Am I right? Somebody say intentionality. Things don't just happen. People make them happen. God is saying to somebody this morning, listen very carefully. If you need to take notes, take notes. If you need to type them down in your phone, do that. Create the life you want. Ask God's word to somebody this morning like I just heard it this side of my head. Create your life. Don't just accept things as they come and say, oh, life happened. No, even when life happens, you have an option. Somebody say, I have an option. It is often said that when you stop growing, you start dying. Do you want to grow? Do you expect to grow? Do you have a plan to grow? Do you have timelines for your growth? Do you pursue your timelines and your plans. Or are they haphazard? Somebody say no more. No. Growth is not natural. Have you ever seen a baby born and the baby just started growing? No. You have to do something. You have to feed the baby. Do you see plants that just appear. Even weeds do not just grow. Something is making them grow. If negatives are growing in your life, something is feeding them. You need to withdraw the food of the negativities in your life to stop their growth. If you want positives, you need to feed the growth of the positives you're looking for. Amen. 
You want to grow in your career and you're flocking with those that talk down on your manager, you're not going to grow. You want to have your own house and all you do is talk about that landlord. He's increased the rent again. They're so greedy. You're not going to have one. And even if you have one, that house is going to be a hell of a problem, pardon my language, in your hands. Somebody say expectations. Excuses for not growing. Oh, I haven't found the perfect time. I'm afraid of making mistakes. Others are better than me. I don't feel like growing. I'm tired of trying. I don't know how long it would take, like me sometimes, when I want to lose 10 kgs. And I'm like, how long will it take me to lose 10 kgs? No, just start growing. Amen. Don't look at how long it's going to take. Somebody say, take a step. And another step. That's how to grow. Excuses for not growing. No motivation. Nobody's encouraging me. I've been trying all my best. But no, my wife is always talking me down. So I give up. It's not your wife's life. It's your life. It's not your husband's life. It's your life. Amen. So why let somebody run your life? I don't have motivation, so I give up. No, you'll be amazed that when you give up, they're going to pick up on the same dream and run with it. Excuses for not growing. Nobody has done it before. Why should I do it? It doesn't run in my family. Why should I do it? So we're going to camp there. Somebody say limiting mindset. There's a lot of us, we have limiting. I've had some of us talk, and this is not against anyone. Sometimes we just talk maybe unintentionally, and sometimes I do it too, especially with my weight loss. This year, I'm killing it in Jesus' name. Amen. I think our coach Pam was like, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Today, we are focusing on bursting, destroying uprooting, limiting mindsets and beliefs. In my culture, this is what we do, and that's how we are. Somebody say, I'll be an exception. So expect greater this year. A gentleman was walking through an elephant camp one day, and he spotted that the elephants were not moving. They weren't in cages, but they were not moving. Elephants. All that was holding them back from escaping from the camp was a small piece of rope tied to their legs. Tied to one of their legs. As the man gazed upon the elephants, he was completely confused as to why the elephants didn't use their strength to break the rope and escape the camp. They could easily have done so. Of course, you know how big elephants are. But instead, they didn't try to, they didn't try at all. This man was curious, wanting to know the answer. He asked a trainer nearby, why are the elephants just standing there? Why are they not trying to escape? The trainer replied, listen, when these elephants were very young and much smaller, we used the same rope to tie them at that age. It was enough to hold them. But as they grew older, they are conditioned to believe that they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them. So they never tried to break free. What's the moral of the story? No matter how much the world tries to hold you back, always continue with the belief that what you want to achieve is possible. You have a soul, and your soul is living. Your soul controls your thought. Your soul is different from your spirit. When a wrong thought comes to your head, your soul is what stops the thoughts. Am I right? 
Can something stop your thoughts from running? Can you think like if something wrong was coming to your head? Can you stop the thought? Can you? Yeah, you can. That thing controlling it is not even your spirit. It's your soul, your consciousness. That's why it is often said that if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. Because your soul is much more than what you think. It's living. It never dies. Amen. Moral of the story. No matter how much the world tries to hold you back, always continue the belief that what you want to achieve is possible. Believing that you can become successful in the most, believing that you can become successful is the most underlying, the most important step in actually growing. Amen. Matthew chapter 9 verse 28. Jesus saw a man. He said, do you believe I can do this? Expectation. This story that we read, that Brother Kuda read for us about Elijah and the king and the, and the widow, tells us that God can do the impossible things, even in the most impossible places. Amen. But then we must partner with God. Somebody say partner with God. That's why the Bible says we are co-laborers with God. God will not just, again, God is spirit. God is not permitted to operate in this world unless through humans. Because he said he has given the earth to man. This is our place of dominion. That's why God, we will always want us to pray. The prayer place is a place of exchange where we give God the authorization to operate in our lives, in our affairs, in the world. Shout amen. That's why prayer is important. You must pray. It's a place of authorization. Somebody say authorization. Yes. When we pray, we authorize God and I say, God, you are a spirit. Come in. Because it's a law. Spiritual laws cannot be broken. Amen, somebody. Same with demons and bad spirits. Somebody must give them access to operate. Maybe through witchcraft or whatever. Now, God is expecting us to partner with him this year. Do you believe that I can do this? Jesus said in Matthew 9, 28. In Acts chapter 3, verse 5, the man at the beautiful gate, he couldn't walk. He had expectations. The Bible says, and he gave heed to them. He looked up to them expecting to receive something. He was looking to them, a lame man. He thought, oh, if you can just give me maybe $5 or $1. But he got even what money could not buy. That's what expectation does. If they had given him one dollar, he would still be there another year and another year and another year and another year. Somebody said, if you aim for the stars, at least you will fall to the sky. So aim high anyway. But if you aim for the sky, maybe you fall on sky tower. Or if you aim for sky tower, you fall to the ground, God forbid. So aim as high as possible. Somebody say, I will aim high. I will enlarge my coast. Elijah's source had dried up. And God told Elijah, relocate. If you're going to change your situation, where you live, anything you do, your job this year, make sure you hear from God. Because every open door is not an open door from God. Can I have a believing amen? Elijah got to the widow. She had a limiting mindset. She had her last meal. Somebody say last meal. The last food. She was like, hey, you guy, where are you coming from? You want food? Sorry, this food is for me and my baby. And she said they were going to eat and die. That was her expectation. Maybe last year was so rough. Your hopes are even like, I don't even care anymore. Somebody, when I was preparing this, I'll read this to you. God says, stretch your growth plan. Stretch your dream. Expand your vision. You are more than where you are. You are, I'm not motivating you, okay? I'm not a motivational speaker. I speak the mind of God as he speaks. Amen, somebody. He said, you are more than you think. Oh my 
wickedness. If somebody, if God was to open our eyes to know who you really are, you'd be amazed. Even Satan is afraid of you. He said, stretch. Somebody say, stretch. Increase. Be expectant. Because Jesus is going to be coming to visit this year. But do you believe he can do it? God said, move, because I have commanded the widow to feed you there. This year, God will be commanding mercies. You see, your employer is not just going to employ you because she likes you. It's because God is going to give commands. Do I have an amen? And mercy will find you in the name of Jesus. Mercy will find me this year in the name of Jesus. The widow was expecting negativity. She was expecting death. But Elijah said, don't be afraid. And she went with the expectation. So when the word of God comes to you, don't say, oh, pastor is just talking. Oh, they already settled in New Zealand. That's why we're not all at the same level. Oh my goodness. Yes, we can. Somebody say, yes, we can. Because with men, it is impossible. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Shout hallelujah. Elijah said to the woman, don't be afraid. You see, the world is going to get worse. It's going to burn. It's going to be, all our prayers, we're going to pray, Lord, have mercy. Yes, we're going to keep praying so that God can temper judgment with mercy or mercy with judgment. Either way, like he will just slow down on us and say, Father, have mercy. But it's not going to get any easier. That's scriptures. That's the word of God. It cannot change. He has a timeline. And this is signs of the end time. But he said something. He said, when the world is burning, his children. Is somebody excited? He's got a plan for his children. But then you must align. Somebody say align. Don't be afraid. And she went with the expectation. Somebody say, I will not be afraid. In 2023, no fear. Somebody shout, no fear. Hmm. Fear attracts evil. Job said, the things that I feared came upon me. That's why you shouldn't fear. Every time Jesus saw people, he would say, do not fear. So many times in scriptures, about 365 times at least, he says, don't be afraid. Why? Because fear brings a snare. It brings what you are afraid of. Somebody say, I will not be afraid. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. And the lion goes well. He turns away, not for anyone. Amen. And our God is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So if you have the lion of lions on your side, why should you be afraid of the devil that is like a lion but not a lion? Somebody say expectations. So this woman received the word, don't be afraid. And those words changed her. The words changed her expectations Changed her thoughts, changed her actions, and her actions led to her experience that led to the overflow. Somebody shout overflow. I'm going to rush through now. The showers of mercies will fall this year. Amen. Look at your neighbor. My showers are already falling. This morning as we prayed, I saw like showers falling here. Amen, somebody. Somebody lift your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive showers of mercies in the name of Jesus Christ. So the word of God has gone forth this year. Change your expectations. If your expectations were here before, increase your ex Somebody say, stretch. Where is your vision board? Do we know what vision boards are? Pastor told us to download pictures, make a collage, like a collection of photos, where you want to be, put them around your house, write scriptures of where you see yourself, 
Put them on your mirror, on your wardrobe. Put them everywhere. That's your vision board. Where do you want to go? All the pictures you printed, did you keep them in your bag where you will not see them? When you see them, sight is very important. The Bible says, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. So what are you seeing? Amen. I can show you some of my vision board. Collection of photos. So do your collection. Don't just wish. Somebody say be intentional. Where's your vision board? What pictures have you downloaded? How many times have you looked at them? Have you pasted them around your house? In your office? On your mirror? In your kitchen? On your fridge? The Bible says, these people honor me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. They say, oh, this year I'm going to make it. But inside their heart, they don't believe what they're saying. Marry your words with your thoughts. Amen. Lift your hands. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to match my words with my thoughts. In the name of Jesus. This year, as you change your expectations, your thoughts will automatically change. Because if you're expecting me to visit you, you start thinking about me. You'll be thinking about what I like to eat. What I, you would like me to see, what I, you want me to see you wear. How you want to set the table. Are you going to put candles or flowers? Are you going to put European or Italian food? You know, you're going to be thinking of your visitor. Amen, somebody? So when you are expectant, you change your thoughts. Limiting mindsets. This year, to receive your expectations, let your confession mass, match your expectations and your thoughts. Don't be double-tongued. Don't be double-tongued. I want to be married. But inside you, you feel like it, it won't happen. No. It's not going to happen because your thoughts are more powerful than your words. Because the Bible says eventually that everything you see on the outside comes from inside. Praise God. Hmm. Confessing positive, but your heart is not saying what you're, what you're actually thinking. Saying something else. The Bible says, let your eye be single. Your words and thoughts must match. Marry your thoughts and your words. Somebody say, I will marry my words with my thoughts. Regardless of your experience, even when it's going down. I remember when we were in Germany and they said we should go. My husband's contract had finished. You will never hear negativity, amen? You just put down the passport, dance around it, glory to Jesus, amen, somebody. Somebody say faith. Yes, faith is speaking what you want to see. You want to be a good wife? Are you a good husband yourself? Sorry, you want a good wife? You want to marry somebody good? Are you a good husband yourself? Are you just talking it and inside you, you are not doing that? You want to have a good husband? Are you a good woman yourself? You want a fantastic employer? Are you a fantastic employee yourself? Let the thoughts marry the words, and then the actions will change. You are the average of the five top people that you associate with. So if all closest of your friends are here and you are here, it's a matter of time you're going to drop to that level. So you must be intentional this year. Somebody say expectations. If you want to go here, you must look for those people that are here and build relationships with them. Not for selfish reason, because it must be a give and take. Amen, somebody. Don't just stay here and say, nobody's looking for me. Find them. Send emails, even if you don't know them. And say, I've been admiring you for, from afar. I'd just like you to mentor me. I'd just like to follow you. I'd just like to have a coffee with you. They won't say no. Amen. Expectations. Somebody shout expectations. How can I expect, how can I experience change of expectations and the reign of mercy? Change your thoughts. Be intentional about your input into your life and actions. Plan. Pursue your plan and be accountable. Somebody say be accountable. Don't be everywhere. If you are everywhere, you are nowhere. Amen. I'll finish in five minutes at 12.15. Praise God. 
So your limiting mindset before I finish. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinks, somebody say, as I think, so I am. You are a reflection of your thoughts. Your current life is a, ref a, a photo of who, you know when you stand in front of the mirror and you expect to see Queen Elizabeth or King Charles? That's not going to happen. You're going to see a reflection of yourself. So the life that you see currently, the life that I see currently is a reflection of my thoughts. If I want to change the life I see, I need to change my thoughts. Somebody say change your thoughts. Why do we need to change our thoughts? Your thoughts are you. So if you don't like what you see in your life currently, start from there. Your thoughts lead to your words. And your words lead you in the direction of your life. If you speak it today, it may happen 10 years time or 5 years time. But words never fail. When I was a lot younger, I used to talk to my friend and say, no, I'm not going to have children. I'm not going to have children. I don't know where that demon came from and entered me. I said, I'm not going to have children. From where to where then? And then eventually I realized, and then I got into that space. For the first couple of whatever, after I met my husband, I didn't get pregnant. God had mercy on me. And then I got pregnant. But do you know, after the second pregnancy, they yanked out my womb. Praise God. Words. Powerful. You see me sometimes, I'm very careful and I'm very like this with life. Because as young as I am, I have seen a few things that I know that don't joke with life. Life is not a playground. Somebody say words. So to change your expectations this year, change your thoughts. To change your thoughts, you change your words. Amen? Or your thoughts will change your words, vice versa. But essentially, the heart. Somebody say my heart. Your thoughts will change your words. The Bible says a good person produces good things from the treasury of his heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from your heart. The Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your thoughts change your actions. It can change your words. And your words can help you change your actions. Your Have you ever seen a time where you heard something about somebody? That was a seed sown in your heart. Something negative. Even if you liked that person before. But the next time you see the person, you are not like very happy again. Am I right? Because a seed was sown. That's the heart affecting the actions. Your thoughts can change your actions. Matthew 15, 19. For from the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery. These are the words of Jesus. And Jesus cannot lie. Your thoughts are supposed to change your association. If you want to change your life, you must change your association. Your association determines your destination. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Change or amend your relationship. If you want to go north and you are heading south, will you get to the north? No. So you can't complain at the end of 2023 that your life didn't happen the way you wanted it. Change your association. Are you a Christian on Sunday and then Monday to Saturday you are somebody else? Change your association. Friendships must be two-way. Don't say I can move with anyone I like and my life will not be affected. No. The Bible says his spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. Human beings are spirits. When somebody talks to you and you move with them for a while, you start experiencing a transference of spirits. That's why sometimes when you flatmate with some people, you start becoming alike. 
Transference of spirit. So there's no way that you're going to be moving with people that are not going in the right direction and your life will not be going there. Even if you don't want to, your life is standing there. It's a matter of time. Same thing with positivity. If you want to walk, amen, somebody, hallelujah. I want to be a billionaire, amen. It's going to happen. Words are seeds. Praise God. So find them. You want to buy a house? Go for the open home. You want to be a better Christian? Look for those that are genuine believers. Pastor said this morning, not everyone in church is actually for church. And when I say church, for Jesus. So you have to choose wisely your association. Praise God. I've had some people complain to me. Why is that person behaving like that? Why is that person behaving like that? In church, not everyone is going to heaven. But then, you'll be surprised that they may become like the thief on the cross. Last minute salvation. You would have allowed them to derail you. And then they enter eventually. Look at this guy. Kim, what's it? Kanye West. Do you know how many people have gone to, where, gone to hell? Because of this guy, look at Justin D Timberlake, jo Justin, sorry, J Justin Bieber. Do you know how many people have died? How many girls have been destroyed because of Justin Bieber? Now he's singing gospel? Jesus, don't let anyone derail you. Watch your association. We've heard of murderers, witches. When a witch repents today, Jesus will say, welcome home. But what of all the people she has killed? God, watch your association. It's a new year. Praise God. Change your lifestyle. And when we do these things, then our experiences will change. Praise God. Somebody is becoming that long-awaited manager that you've been waiting for this year in the name of Jesus. Read books that will help you. Open heavens. Pastor has some there under the box. In the box. It's just one page per day. If you don't have it yet, grab one before you go. Open heavens will help you. There's also this book by Miles Monroe. In pursuit of purpose. You must know your life's purpose. Otherwise, you'll be meandering, wandering through life. No direction. Books by Smith Wigglesworth. David Oedeko, Joyce Mayer, the battlefield of the mind. Watch what you watch, what you watch, what you don't want, you don't watch. Don't put porn and say it doesn't matter. Don't go to places where you see things that will irritate your spirit. You're a Christian, you are found in the clubs and the parties. What are you doing there? I'm not condemning anyone, but I'm saying to you that if you want a change as brothers and sisters... Because when you have problems in the church, it ends up on the pastor's table. So we don't want problems. We want you to prosper. We want you to do well. That's why we must tell you these things. Like doctors, sometimes they give you injection, infusion. Sometimes the medications are bitter. But then, good for your body. Amen, somebody. God will help us this year in the name of Jesus. Watch your eye gate. What you watch. What you hear is not everything on social media you must absorb. Don't let them contaminate you. There are lots of positive things. Look for John Maxwell. Amen? Grow and increase. Look for Joyce Mayer. Look for Rick, um, Rick Darren or something. Rick Warren, thank you. There are lots of people that you can follow. Watch your company. Watch where you go. Watch where you go. Somebody say, watch where you go. There's a story in the Bible where a tower fell on some people. And when the tower fell on them, all the people died. You say that, oh, are they more righteous? It's not because anyone is righteous. If the righteous go to the wrong places and judgment was meant to visit them, judgment will meet all of them there. Praise God. But that will not be us this year in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I will be wise. 
Let's be on our feet as we pray. Receive grace this morning. I don't know what you've picked up. I don't know what you need to change. But one assignment I'm going to give you is when you get home, sit down and do a plan. And find an accountability partner. Somebody you report to that's trustworthy. And say, this is my plan. Can you please help me in this area? Hold me accountable. Lift up your hands and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace in the name of Jesus. Grace. Grace. To watch my words. Grace. Grace. Grace to plan and pursue my plan. Grace. Grace to find the right people that where I want to go so I can follow them. Grace, Lord. Grace to grow. Grace to remove limiting mindsets. Grace, Lord. Grace to do better in my place of work. Grace for excellence. Grace, God. Grace, Jesus. Grace to have a better, a better year than last year. A better year than all the years I've had. Grace, Lord. Grace, Lord. Father, this will be my best year ever. Grace, Lord. Grace, Lord. Grace for breakthrough. Breakthrough in business. Breakthrough in ministry. Grace in the name of Jesus. Grace to walk with the right people. Grace, Jesus. Grace, Father. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for your word. We know you have released grace. Father, we ask you for one more thing. The ability to follow through. To not just be hear us alone. So that by the end of this year, Father, we'll look back and say, yes, I was expectant. And everything I, ex I expected, they really happened. Father, let that be our testimony at the end of this year in the name of Jesus. Nothing missing, nothing broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together and shout hallelujah. Amen. So if you need open heavens after the service under the pastor's chair there you can pick one up after the service God bless you Amen are we ready for our confessions before we do that let us just stretch our hands to Mommy right now let us thank God for using her this morning I pray oh Lord that you continue to fill her with your wisdom with your counsel oh God in Jesus name I pray Papa that everything she touches shall excel in Jesus name we shall never know better yesterday Father in Jesus name thank you Jesus thank you Papa for in Jesus name we have prayed are we ready for our confessions three two one let's go my new year has come in a grand style every old cycle of pain and disappointment are gone forever amen I am no longer tied down to evil patterns and circumstances of life. This is my year of the supernatural and miraculous and speed of the Holy Ghost. Amen. What my generation is desperately searching for has been delivered unto me mercifully. Amen. If there are anyone that will laugh this month and beyond, it shall be me and my family. Amen. My testimony this month and beyond shall be. It is raining blessings everywhere. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Surely. God goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let us go this week expectant in Jesus name. Amen. Have a good week guys.